Doctors and researchers have been studying cancer for generations. Thanks to pioneers in science and tireless dedication, we have made great strides in diagnosis, treatment, and the quest for a cure. But we need to understand where we started to learn how to get where we are headed. Join us as we explore the history of blood cancer and highlight just how far we've come. I've been involved in the treatment of leukemia for more than 50 years. Uh, I saw my first patient as a resident, I guess in 1970, and had no idea what the disease was. So I've been lucky in, in the sense of seeing what's happened to leukemia over, over five or six uh, decades. And a lot has happened. AML, or acute myeloid leukemia, is an abnormal growth of um, white blood cells of the myeloid lineage. The myeloid lineage is um, the uh, growth pattern that produces cells called neutrophils. What neutrophils do is fight infection. What happens with leukemia, and, and frankly all cancers, is there's a mutation or a series of mutations which makes it so that that maturation no longer occurs. So, for example, instead of having neutrophils, red blood cells, and platelets like adults in a family, you have a block in what we call differentiation or growth that um, leaves you almost with a society of infants. And the uh, symptoms that occur as a consequence of that is you're missing the adults. So you have a propensity to infection, you're weak from anemia, for example, and uh, potentially bleeding problems because of a relative uh, absence of um, platelets. And then you have the accumulation of these infants or blasts, either in the bone marrow or the blood, and that's what we call uh, AML. When I first um, began uh, treating AML, uh, a regimen which has been called 3 and 7 or 7 and 3, which consisted of three days of a drug called donorubicin and seven days of a drug called uh, cytosine or abinocide or ARAC, became the standard and the initial standard for treatment. It has remained the standard for most patients um, until this day. And you can look at that um, two ways. One is, why are we doing the same thing? But the other is we're doing the same thing because it's a substantial benefit. And as I got older and started seeing patients over the years, one of the more satisfying things was seeing um, a substantial fraction of patients who were cured. We've done literally dozens of studies to add drugs to seven and three to see if it can be improved upon. We cured a lot of people with seven and three and still do. Over the years, we learned a lot more about uh, whom we cured and whom we did not. Uh, people with certain genetic patterns had a uh, high fraction of cure, whereas people with other genetic patterns had a very, very low fraction of cure can't tell you how satisfying it is to see lots of people who were cured by uh, that treatment. And that treatment was finite. It was about six, four to six months, and then it was uh, done. Through the years, we've identified groups through um, more sophisticated laboratory studies, cytogenetics, uh, something called flow cytometry, which can characterize um, proteins on the surface of cells, uh, molecular genetics, which can um, more accurately define the type and also function of the mutations that, um, that cause leukemia. And in, in recent years, um, there have been a number of drugs that have been developed that um, can, in a relatively uh, precise and targeted fashion, 
um, hit the products of, of, of some of these mutations. But perhaps the home run and, and most interesting uh, was the treatment of a type of AML uh, called APL. APL is a very well characterized disease and the big break uh, came initially from China where they reported that treatment with a drug called Atra, all trans retinoic acid, a vitamin A type uh, product, given orally, um, can treat uh, patients with APL first in relapse and then as initial therapy without chemotherapy and, and with remarkable results that you could see that the patient has changed in just a couple of days of, of receiving this medicine. It worked, as, as did uh, similar trials. Um, it took the cure rate up to about 70%. The Chinese struck again and um, presented uh, data with a drug called arsenic trioxide, obviously an arsenic compound. And to make a long story short, the combination of arsenic plus ATRA, which is soon to become all oral, if done correctly, cures 80 to 90% of, of patients with this leukemia. You were taking patients who were um, in hospital for at least a month and treating some of them as outpatients with pills, with a vitamin. Remarkable. Lots of patients were cured with chemotherapy alone, but unfortunately, uh, in many, the uh, leukemia was resistant to the chemotherapy. Allogeneic transplantation developed sort of in parallel beginning in the uh, early 1970s. What allogeneic transplant is, you take stem cells either from the bone marrow or more recent years uh, from the peripheral blood from donors. What's done with allogeneic transplant is the patients are given high doses of chemotherapy to both treat their residual leukemia and also suppress their immune system so that they don't reject the stem cells from the donor. The major effect of um, allogeneic transplant is actually not due to the chemotherapy but to an immune effect whereby the lymphocytes from the donor recognize the recipient, the host, as foreign and recognize the leukemia as foreign and kill the leukemia. The uh, problem is those lymphocytes are not smart enough to distinguish the leukemia from the rest of the host and can also immunologically attack the host, something called graft-versus-host disease. Uh, there have been enormous advances in uh, treating and preventing graft-versus-host disease at the same time maintaining the anti-leukemia effect. Bottom line is that uh, the initial studies showed that people with leukemia that was refractory to chemotherapy um, could be cured with allogeneic transplant. Transplants have now been moved from just uh, where we treated people with refractory leukemia or resistant leukemia to uh, much earlier stages where we have been able to identify people who are unlikely to be cured by chemotherapy and they now receive um, transplant in first remission. That is when their uh, leukemia is controlled. Um, this has substantially in, uh, increased the cure rate. During the years as, as different therapies have been tested, um, we've also done laboratory evaluations of the leukemia cells. And for example, uh, we've discovered that leukemias that have certain chromosomal changes are highly susceptible to the effects of uh, chemotherapy alone. Now every patient with AML also has genetic 
analyses attempting to identify genes that are uh, altered in their specific type of AML. Drugs have been developed which specifically target those metabolic changes. They've uh, all been shown to be of benefit in patients with relapsed AML. The important lesson here is that um, studies in the laboratory have identified uh, such targets, and it's likely that uh, other such targets will be identified in the future. And of course, uh, to reemphasize the importance of clinical trials, which incorporate these new scientific advances and these new drugs in the, uh, in the future. That people who treat acute leukemia focus on cure. Obviously, you're aware that some patients we can cure and, and offer um, therapy that prolongs life and is, is more palliative. But the first thing we're thinking about when we see a new person with uh, leukemia is whether we can cure them and how to best cure them. What chemotherapy, whether or not transplant is uh, something that's going to figure prospectively in our, our plan to how to cure it. But importantly, we're thinking about um, cure. Obviously, are very happy when we see it still have a lot of challenges because we don't see it in everybody. With the combination of targeted therapies, chemotherapy and transplant, the cure rate in younger patients is substantial. The cure rate in older patients is not. The biggest challenge we, we face in the treatment of AML uh, currently is with older adults. And the biology of the disease in older adults is, is different. Chemotherapy that cures uh, many younger people cures fewer than 10% of people who are older. The uh, reasons for this are that the uh, leukemia cells are resistant to this type of chemotherapy. Um, there are more problems with tolerating chemotherapy in, in older adults for obvious reasons. It's harder to apply transplant to older adults because of, uh, of health issues, although um, we now transplant many, many people over the age of, of, of 70 and, and perhaps even older, but there have been changes in, in therapy for uh, older adults recently. Instead of using uh, standard three and seven, there have been combinations involving a drug called uh, 5-Azocytidine um, in combination with a drug called Venetoclax. The, the latter uh, is administered orally. It's uh, somewhat more tolerable than three and seven so that you could apply that therapy to uh, a higher percentage of patients, uh, some of whom doctors might not have considered even treating before this uh, came along. It's an exciting time uh, to be in research and to be in medicine. Um, the changes we're going to see are, are in the future are going to be, I think, unimaginable. Uh, in terms of medicine and in cancer specifically. As I hope I've uh, emphasized, there have been remarkable changes uh, in the treatment of uh, AML in the last uh, 50 years uh, to the point where a substantial fraction of patients, uh, particularly younger patients, are cured by chemotherapy and or with the addition of, uh, of transplant. There have been extraordinary advances in supportive care which uh, have transformed something which may have been considered cruel to something that's um, uh, tolerable uh, even for uh, elderly patients with um, AML. Uh, you can talk to patients with real optimism. Uh, in terms 
of the future. Um, when I'm talking to medical students about uh, oncology, one of the things I, I say is I can't think of a better time to be coming up to, uh, to be a doctor. The advances in science uh, are frankly breathtaking. It's, it's amazing how many clever people there are studying cells and studying chemistry and studying immunology, which eventually um, becomes applicable to, to patient care. Um, frankly, this is very different than when I started, and I have certainty that uh, this will apply to patients uh, with AML uh, in the future as it's being applied to uh, patients with all types of cancer. For more information about AML and other blood cancers, please contact an information specialist at 1-800-955-4572 or visit lls.org forward slash information specialists.